Finally, the long-awaited Snyder Cut of Justice League has been released. Director Zack Snyder spoke with IGN and revealed a few more details. For instance, his project is set to conclude with an ending sequence that is quite similar to that of the original cut. Moreover, in addition to the already released six chapters, there will be a kind of epilogue that'll stretch over 20 to 25 minutes and will be called A Father Twice Over. Despite the massive cliffhanger, as Snyder himself calls the ending, a sequel is not planned. However, partly due to Warner Brothers' apparent reluctance to do so. Obviously, this steals the thunder from any theories about a sequel that have been circulating in the past. That doesn't mean, though, that there isn't enough material for a sequel. Snyder himself recently philosophized in the New York Times about Superman finally succumbing to the anti-life equation and the Flash thereupon traveling back in time to rectify the events in the interests of the Justice League members. Rudiments of this are said to already be visible in the epilogue of the Snyder Cut in which some heroes and villains join forces on the dark side controlled Earth. In a sequel, Darkseid would then have fought the armies of the world just as he did thousands of years ago. The grand finale would be all the world's forces joining together to fight the last great battle against the villain. The film has been available worldwide since Thursday. Have you seen it yet? If so, we look forward to a spoiler-free discussion with you in the comments down below. Sobering news for Venom fans. The blockbuster with Tom Hardy has once again been given a new release date. Originally, Sony's long-awaited project was supposed to be finally released at the end of June, but as officials have now announced, the release will be postponed again by several months. Due to the persistent unfavorable situation to release new movies, this has sadly become quite common. And thus, Sony's doing the same as many other big studios have done before. For instance, The Man from Toronto with Kevin Hart and Woody Harrelson is also fallen victim to the postponements and has even been pushed back until at least next year. The new release date for Venom, Let There Be Carnage, is now set for September 17, 2021. And we can only hope that this time the date will actually be met. As Disney announced last Wednesday, the production of Disney's Peter Pan and Wendy remake has begun in Vancouver. Director David Lowery and producer Jim Whittaker, who previously collaborated on Pete's Dragon in 2016, are responsible for the live-action project. The script was written by Toby Holbrook and it is said to be based in large part on the original from 1953, which in turn is a film adaption of J.M. Barrie's 110-year-old novella Peter and Wendy. The cast is also quite impressive, because with Alexander Molony and Ever Anderson, they have found two suitable actors for Peter Pan and his lady friend Wendy. They will be joined by Jude Law as Captain Hook, Jara Shahidi as Tinkerbell, and Jim Gaffigan as me. Also new to the cast are Alan Tudyk and Molly Parker as Mr. and Mrs. Dowling, as well as the still unknown actors Joshua Pickering as John, Jacoby Jube as Michael, and Alyssa Wapanatak as Tiger Lily. We are looking forward to the remake of The Timeless Tale of Neverland and eagerly await its release next year. After DreamWorks, Puss in Boots grossed a whopping 552 million US dollars in 2011, the release date and the title of the sequel has now been announced after a period of almost 10 years. The sequel is named Puss in Boots The Last Wish and will be released on September 23, 2022. What will please fans of the first part is that Antonia Banderas will once again lend his voice to the Puss in Boots. The story will be about the search for the last wish, which is the only way to restore the main character's eight already lost lives. Behind the scenes, there has also been a small change of scenery, meaning that Bob Perschietti will no longer be the director, but instead Joel Crawford. Alongside him, Mark Swift will be responsible for the production. Not a bad combo, as the two have already proven with the Golden Globe-nominated animation movie the Croods, A New Age. We are definitely excited about the latest Masterstroke by DreamWorks and are looking forward to Puss in Boots 2. As we reported last week, James Cameron's Avatar was re-released in Chinese cinemas. Soon after the release, it was already evident what we and many others had predicted. Avengers Endgame has to give up its first place among the most successful movies of all time to its competitor. On release date, Disney already took in around 3.5 million US dollars which is pretty decent for a film that's over 10 years old. In addition to numerous discussions among fans about which movie is truly the most successful one, there's one party in particular that is enjoying the whole spectacle, namely Disney. So, to sum it up briefly, Disney has knocked themselves off their throne and taken it back again at the same time. 
While the Academy Awards in February of last year were still comparatively ordinary, this year the organizers will of course have to come up with something different. At the ceremony on April 25th, only the nominees, an accompanying person as well as the lauditors are allowed to be on site, as an official email from David Rubin, the president of the Academy, reveals. As every year, we provide you with a brief overview of the most important categories and nominees. Minor spoiler alert! Netflix will most likely sweep the board just like it did at the Golden Globes. In the Best Picture category, the two Netflix projects, Mank and The Trial of the Chicago 7, are among the nominees, competing against Amazon Prime's Sound of Metal. But a favorite for the Best Picture category, generally considered as the most important, is a completely different film, namely Chloe Zhao's Nomadland, which has already won the all-important Golden Globe in Best Picture drama. The late Black Panther star Chadwick Boseman was also nominated again for his leading role in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom after being awarded at the Golden Globes and has a good chance of being honored anew. What is particularly noteworthy about this year's nominations is the degree of diversity. It was already clear that Chloe Zhao as a Chinese director has received more awards than anyone else before her, with a total of 56 in one award season, including 13 as writer and 34 as a director. Something else that's new, though, is that due to the theatrical closures, streaming hits will naturally be the ones that find their way into the awards. We are definitely looking forward to the somewhat different Oscars on April 25th.